Hey there folks, Tim Slade here from the eLearning Designers Academy and community. Thank you so much for watching this how-to workshop where we're gonna be taking a look at how to build a custom and branded eLearning template in Articulate Storyline. Now, if you've never watched any of our how-to workshops, these are meant to be practical, in-depth sessions where we take a look at everything from instructional design techniques, e-learning development, visual design, uh, portfolios, and of course, Articulate Storyline, which is what we're gonna take a look at today. Now, if you happen to be watching this on YouTube and if you haven't done so already, make sure to click that like, subscribe, and that bell button so that you'll get alerted the next time I publish a video just like this one. And of course, make sure to join us inside the e-learning designer community. It's completely free and it's a great place where you can connect and network with other folks like myself and others who are looking to grow their e-learning design skills and careers. All right, so let's jump on in. How to build a custom and branded e-learning template in Articulate Storyline. So what I want to show you today and what I want to walk you through is my actual process for how I would go about building a template in Articulate Storyline. If I were working with a client, or maybe if I was working internally as an instructional designer or an e-learning developer within a company, how might I go about creating a template that I can reuse and repurpose in Articulate Storyline that aligns with my company's or my client's uh, brand standards. And this is a very common task that we have to, uh, that, that we're tasked with as instructional designers, as, as e-learning developers, working with clients that have specific brand standards where they want a course that has a consistent look and feel, right? So let's jump over here into Storyline. And first thing I want to talk about is what is included in an e-learning template. You know, the thing about e-learning templates, if I'm being completely honest with you, is when I first got started, in the world of e-learning like 15 years ago, I actually used to hate e-learning templates. I thought, gosh, this just restricts my creativity. It restricts uh, what I can do with my slides. Every course is gonna look the same. And that's because a lot of the templates that I've been working with were way too rigid. Uh, and one of the things that I've learned since then is that the a really well-designed template and the purpose of a template is really just to provide a sense of visual consistency. It doesn't matter what gets presented on the screen. It can all be different and unique, but you do want to have a common thread of some visual consistency, especially, like I said, if you're working with a client who has specific fonts or colors or images that you might be using. So what is typically included in an e-learning template? Well, the first thing I wanna point out here are title slides and content slides and variations of those layouts. Uh, we're gonna spend a lot of time uh, focusing on building uh, a content slide or a title slide and of course our content slides because these are the things that the learner is gonna see the most of and the title slide specifically is usually gonna set the tone, the look and feel for the entire project, right? So typically a template has a content slide and a title slide layout. Uh, it also includes templates and layouts for how you might build some interactive slides, right? So it establishes what does a button look like, or if you were to build a tabbed interaction, or a scenario interaction, or a quiz, what would those look like within the template? So we'll take a look at building those as well. And then of course a template establishes what sort of colors, fonts, and maybe even some of the graphics or icons that you might use uh, throughout your project, right? It provides uh, guidance and all of that. Uh, so we'll look at how to take our clients uh, branding, the colors and fonts, and adapt those uh, into our template. And like I said a moment ago, the most important thing that a template does is it provides consistency. That's the most important piece, is it, it provides a sense of consistency, not with the brand, not just with the brand, but what the learner can expect, and not just in one course, but in all of the courses, all right, that you might create for that company, that brand, that client, right? All right, so uh, I'm gonna close this and I'm gonna open up a new project in Storyline. Let's do that real quickly. And you know, whenever I'm starting off building um, a brand new project and storyline with a new client, I'm working with their brand standards, and I'm working on building some sort of template, um, the first thing that I always, 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 always do uh, before I add any fonts or colors or images or text is I go and I set my slide dimensions. You know, by default, uh, the slide size and storyline is a four by three aspect ratio. And this aspect ratio, worked really well when we had those big clunky monitors on our desk, right? Where the, it was almost square, right? 
this aspect ratio is optimized for that. But nowadays we have widescreen monitors, right? We have monitors that are way wider than what they used to be. We have way more real estate on our monitors. And that's what's known as a 16 by nine aspect ratio. In Storyline, the default's four by three, but I always go and change it. The reason why I do this, if I go to my design tab and I do slide size, and I'm gonna set it to a 16 by nine. Of course, I could set my own custom width and height to create a different aspect ratio if I wanted to. Um, but the reason you wanna do this is it's really hard to go back and retroactively change this. If I were to design my entire template in a four by three aspect ratio, and I changed my mind and went to 16 by nine, it would distort and stretch things out and it would be just a total mess. So the first thing I do anytime I start a new project is I set my slide size. Now, good news, uh, Articulate just added some features recently where you can set uh, 16 by nine or whatever your slide dimensions are as the default. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And now 16 by nine will be my default every time I create a new project. Okay, we'll click okay. Hey, and now we have a 16 by nine aspect ratio. So here's what we're gonna do. The first thing I want to design and establish uh, is my title slide. Like I said a moment ago, the title slide is the first thing the learner's gonna see when they launch your course, right? And the title slide establishes, typically, the, the look and feel that somebody could expect to see throughout an entire course. The title slide usually includes all of the different colors I might be using. It's definitely going to include, include the, the font that I'm gonna be using. The title slide, in my opinion, is where you should spend most of your time because it establishes the look and feel. Everything that you build after that, any, type, any sort of content slides, interactive slides, uh, are typically variations of what you include on your title slide. Now, in order to build this template, this branded template, uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to build an entire template set based off of a real client's uh, style guide that I used to work with. I used to, um, I had a client uh, that I worked with earlier this year and last year called Invelo. And Invelo is a uh, real estate investing platform that helps you uh, invest in real estate. And they have a bunch of great educational materials that I helped develop on the topic of real estate investing. And this is their style guide uh, that I worked with when I first started working with them. Uh, and if you've never worked with a style guide before, uh, most companies, most organizations have some sort of set style guide. You can usually get it from the marketing department. Uh, and the purpose of the style guide is to provide guidance on the use of their colors and their fonts and their logo and their images. And style guides come in all sorts of different shapes and sizes. Some style guides are really detailed. They get into not just the colors and the fonts uh, and uh, the images and all of that stuff. It might actually get into uh, how do you write for that company's voice and that brand, right? What sort of words do you use? It might even talk about animation and the use of buttons depending on the type of company it is. And then other style guides can be a lot simpler. Sometimes they just provide some really basic guidance on colors and fonts and maybe a little bit about the logo and then there's everything else in between. So I'm gonna walk you through this company's style guide and I'm gonna show you how we're going to use it to create this custom template. And you're gonna watch me build this from scratch, all right? So this is our style guide for Envelo. And whenever I'm looking at a style guide like this, uh, I'm not just looking at the guidance that it's providing me, I'm actually looking at how do they actually implement the guidelines that they're, they're explaining in the style guide in the design of the style guide itself, because this would be a great source of inspiration, right? Notice how they, you know, we have this laid out, this the use of colors, this circular shape, right? These are all uh, opportunities for me to take inspiration from uh, how they designed their style guide, right? So we can see here, this first page of our style guide talks about the brand attributes. These are some words that they wanna to use to describe what people should feel when they interact with this brand. It's smart, it's intelligent, sociable, clean, adaptable, et cetera, et cetera, right? And even here, you can see I have some inspiration, right? There's opportunities for inspiration here in the use of the style guide with how they laid this out, uh, the way they separated this divider from this title here with the content. Uh, I could take inspiration from that and we will. All right, here we can see some use of the colors and the logos together. Here we can see, uh, again, use of the logo. Usually style guides will show different variations of how you might use the logo, how the logo might look on a uh, light background versus a colored background versus gradients, et cetera, et cetera. And style guides also usually include um, 
uh, guidance on how to not use the logo, which is uh, always a little bit interesting and can be a bit humorous. It shows how you shouldn't distort it or use it with some sort of detailed background image or don't do an outline, don't invert it, don't do all sorts of weird things, right? Don't add a drop shadow or a glow. Again, this is good guidance. Of course, we have some additional guidance on the logo and how we have space around it. And then we get into some other elements that are really gonna help us, uh, specifically with our brand colors here, right? So I talked about this in a previous um, how-to workshop on visual design, which you'll see linked up here above, uh, on the use of colors. And one of the things I talked about is uh, implementing um, a four color uh, scheme when you're creating your own custom color schemes. And you can see that four color um, rule is being used here. You all, you, we do have additional colors, but the main four colors are here, right? We have a dark color, a light color, and then we have the two brand colors, this purple and this pink. And then we have these other colors here that might be used as accent colors, or they might be used um, as part of some illustrations. And we'll see some examples of this, but this is gonna be really important to me as we um, design out our template to match their colors. And then of course we see guidance here on typography and the use of fonts. So we have to see, um, again, referencing back to that visual design workshop, which I just linked to a moment ago, uh, we have uh, a variation on the three font rule that I talk about, right? Typically what I talk about when you're creating a font scheme or a type, uh, typography scheme is choosing three fonts, one for the heading, one for the body content, and then, oops, didn't mean to zoom in there, and then something for a subheading. And what we can see here, if I zoom in here a little bit, we can see a variation of that. We have the title font, we have the body content here, and we actually have two subheadings. We have one subheading that's a variation of our title. So it's the same font, but a little less bold. And then same thing down here for our copy or body text. It's a variation of our body text, but it's a little bit more bold, right? So we have two options for headlines or subtitles that we can use within our projects, all right? Um, and then if we zoom back out and continue on from there, uh, we just have some additional information about who made the style guide, okay? So this is a great place to get some inspiration. Now you might be asking or thinking to yourself, well, Tim, that's great. What if I'm working with a client or I work at a company where they don't have a style guide? One of the things that I do in addition to uh, reviewing and dissecting a company's style guide is I always, always, always go out to their website. Uh, the website is another really great opportunity for you to get an idea of how they've taken these standards that they've documented in their style guide and how do they bring it to life in something like a website and a website is really not all that different from an e-learning course right you're creating an interactive uh, piece of multimedia well what is a website an interactive piece of multimedia and so we can kind of see how they use the logo and the colors and we can get inspiration on how they use buttons and some of their brand graphics so you can see here here's that yellow color and that blue color uh, you know harkening back to what was in that style guide we can see some altered uh, colors here. We now have a, a pink button and we have some lighter colors here. Maybe those are things that I will use in the creation of my style guide. I like their treatment of images here. We have these circular images. Maybe if I were to do something like a branching scenario uh, sort of interaction, I might create something like that uh, and so forth and so on, right? And we can even look at, let's go take a look at some of the other stuff here. We can get some inspiration from their iconography. So we can see some icons here. I definitely wanna use some icons in my course. Um, so that might be something that I incorporate into my template, all right? So here's what we're gonna do. Let's go back to Storyline here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start by establishing the look and feel for a title slide. And I'm gonna create a couple different variations of my title slide. Uh, and this is where we start getting into uh, what I call visual prototyping, right? Uh, if you've seen my previous how-to workshop on how to develop a prototype, you'll see the link above or down below in the description for that. Uh, I talk about that there are three different types of prototypes. You have a wireframe prototype, which you typically use to uh, test the functionality of a interaction within your course. We're not talking about that right now. Um, we have the MVP prototype, which is usually a sample of your fully developed course. What I want to what I want to talk about is the visual prototype. The visual prototype is when you establish the look and feel of a course. It essentially acts as the template. And this is really what it is that I'm, I'm building here today. And whenever I'm working with a client, I will build some sort of visual prototype, especially if I'm working with their branding and their standards for the first time, I'll create a visual prototype to show them, hey, here's how I've interpreted your brand standards into this e-learning format. How do you, you know, 
How does it look and feel? Do you like it, right? So essentially what we're creating is a visual prototype, all right? Now, I'll be completely honest with you. Uh, whenever I'm starting off the design of a template like this one that I'm going to create, it's a very messy process. You know, there's this great quote, and I always forget the name of who said it. It was a famous graphic designer. Uh, I'll have to look his name up and put a sticky note because I reference this quote all the time. Uh, and you have to excuse my language. The quote is, the, the vast majority of graphic design, like 99% of graphic design, is just moving shit around on the screen until it looks good, all right? And this is exactly how I create my visual prototypes or when I create my templates. I'm literally just moving stuff around on the screen until it looks good, all right? And so it's going to seem and feel really messy, but I promise you it's going to come together. And then once I've established the look and feel, then I'll start committing those things to the master slides and all of that stuff. But right now we're going to keep it pretty scrappy and just design some different slide types, some different variations, and then you'll see how it all comes together, all right? So let's start with creating a basic title slide. Where shall we begin? Well, let's go back to our style guide here. One of the things that I mentioned earlier is that style guides are simply there to provide guidance. Style guides typically don't have guidance on how do you create an e-learning template, right? So what we have to do is we have to interpret uh, the guidelines that it provides and figure out how do we adapt that to an e-learning format. So what I'm really looking for here are sources of inspiration, elements that I might want to adopt and duplicate or replicate within my template. So a couple things I'm going to point out that I really like here. One of the things I like here that I see here is kind of this like gradient purple thing popping out here. I like this circle here. It's kind of like a watermark. And one of the things I also like is this, the way they've laid out this page or this slide here, right? We have this split here with a little bit of that purple shining through. And then we have a big white, uh, white space area. And we have this interesting little shape. I don't know if I'd be able to duplicate that in storyline, but we can, you know, create something similar to this. All right. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to start with a really simple template duplicating this look and feel. Um, and so let's jump over to storyline here. And the first thing I need to do, because I'm going to be working a lot with the colors, is I want to uh, grab a screenshot of the brand colors so I can start sampling them. Now in most style guides, if we go to the colors here, most style guides uh, will include, if we can find them here, here's our colors. Most style guides will include RGB codes or something similar. In this instance, we only have the hex codes. I could manually spend a bunch of time entering that. What I'm going to do instead is I'm just going to take a screenshot of this. One of the cool things you can do in Storyline, it's kind of a feature hidden in plain sight, is you can actually use Storyline to take a screenshot. So I'm going to go to my Insert tab, and I'll select Picture, and I'm going to do a screenshot. And I can either do a screen clipping, which would allow me to take a screenshot of a particular area, or I could select a particular window. In this case, I'm going to do a screen clipping. And what's going to happen is Storyline is going to minimize into the background, and now I can take a screenshot, just like if I were using a tool like Snagit or something similar. And then what it'll do is, hey, it put that screenshot right there on my slide. So now I have something kind of like a little color palette thing here that I can start sampling some colors from. So the first thing I want to do is I just want to get kind of a generic background color for uh, the whole slide area. And you'll notice here we have our four colors and we have this kind of off-white color. I kind of like that. Maybe that'll be the whole background. Not a lot happening there. You might be thinking, well, that seems boring, but trust me, it'll come together. So I'm going to insert a shape and I'm just going to draw a whole shape over this whole thing. Now, uh, you might be thinking, well, Tim, why don't you do this in the master slide? Why don't you establish the background color by going to your slide or your design tab and change the background styles? I could do all of that, but again, I'm moving things around. I'm just experimenting, right? I'm not committing anything to my master slides or to my uh, themes yet. I'm just moving things around because I might change my mind a lot. So I'm just going to work with basic shapes and uh, stuff that I can move around, right? Okay, so I have the shape here. Let's change the fill color. I'll go to the Format tab, do Shape Fill. Let's do an eyedropper. I'm just going to sample that off-white color there. Do Outline, no Outline. Okay, cool. There's a background color. Not, not Nothing horribly remarkable from that, right? Um, now let's go back up here. Because uh, I, like I said, I wanted to duplicate kind of this layout up here where it has that split look, right? So for this, I'm just going to insert a white shape. That's simple. Let's go back to storyline. I'm going to move our colors here out of the way. I put them over there. And let's insert a shape and do a square. 
And, oh, my allergies are so bad. I almost sneezed on you all. Okay. Uh, and we're going to put that right about there. That's fine, right? It feels okay. Maybe I'll make it a little less large. Let's move it like that. Okay. And format, we'll do a shape fill of white. That's easy. White fill, no outline, cool beans. I like that. Okay. So, uh, oops, let's bring that to the front. I don't want to lose that. Okay, so we have that general split layout. The next thing I want to replicate that I really like in their style guide is kind of this purplish glow that they have kind of peeking out from behind that uh, white shape. And there's a lot of different ways I could go about creating that. I could do a gradient fill over here. I think what's gonna be the easiest way for me to do it is to add a drop shadow to the shape here and customize the drop shadow uh, to match some of the colors. Uh, drop shadows are great because they can have depths of field, but the key to using drop shadows is really subtlety. <laughs> you don't, you know, drop shadows can be very overwhelming when you use a lot of them. So I want this to be a really subtle drop shadow, again, to create that glow effect. So I'll go to my format tab and I'm going to do shape effects. I have the shape already selected and I'm going to do a shadow. And rather than selecting any of these default shapes, I'm going to do shadow options. This window is going to allow me to have complete control over the design of my drop shadow. I'll just put that there. First thing I'm going to do is change the color of it. Actually, let's change the direction of it. We'll do a preset. Uh, I want to kind of offset to the left, so I'm going to do this one here. And you can see it adds that there. It's not very pretty. That's okay. Let's change the color. I'm going to do the eyedropper, and let's go with this purple color here. Okay, so now we can see that it's purple. And this is where now I'm going to start playing with these different settings, the transparency, the size, the blur, the angle, the distance. This is where I can adjust uh, the drop shadow. Usually the first thing I do is adjust the size. So we'll make it a little bit bigger. That's really, really harsh, right? So now what we'll do is we'll adjust the blur. Let's make it really blurred out so it makes it very subtle. You see how it kind of blurs itself out there? All right, maybe I'll make it a little bit bigger. Okay, I like that. And now let's bring the transparency down. Let's play with the transparency. We don't want it like that, right? Let's bring it all the way up. Let's make it really transparent. Let's make it like 80% transparent. You kind of get a hint of it. Maybe make the size a little bit larger. Uh, let's do like 103%. I like that. Click close. Okay. I kind of like that. You kind of get that purplish glow popping out from behind it, right? Now, of course, the drop shadow does go around the other edges, but we're not going to see that because it's off the screen, right? So we're only going to see the drop shadow that's peeking out of this side of that shape. Now, is it exactly the same? No, it looks like there's an additional color in here, like the blue color, but we're not going to worry about that. It's, it's mostly purple. I'm happy with it, right? It's good enough. All right, let's also add in the client's logo here, our Envelo logo. Typically, when you're designing some sort of slide template, the client will usually request that you incorporate their logo on the title screen. At the minimum, I think that's acceptable. What you don't want to do is include the logo on every single slide. That's a little bit logo overkill. I never really ever recommend that with my clients, but a logo on the title screen is totally appropriate. And there's several different options for that. Let's get the logo on the screen in the first place. I'm just going to insert this picture from file. And uh, I have my assets folder here and I have two versions. I have the a white version of the logo and the colored version. I'm just going to start with the colored one and put it here. Now, Typically, when you see a logo on a slide like this, you might see the logo, um, you know, it's not too big. You might see it up in the corner like this or over here or down in a corner. That's always safe. Uh, in this case, what I want to do is I really like this balance where there's something here in the middle with content, right? Obviously, this is text, but maybe I'll replace that with the logo. Maybe I'm going to put the logo over here on the center of the screen, right? Something like that where they're gonna see the logo and then over here we can have our slide title, all right? So before we add our slide title though, I am feeling like what's happening over here in this area here on the right-hand side of our screen is pretty boring. <laughs> it's stark. Uh, and whenever, I'm a, whenever I find myself in a situation like this, or if you ever find yourself in a situation like this, this is where people start making really bad decorative decisions. They'll start adding additional blocks of color. Maybe they'll make this whole color because they want it to feel like there's something there, right? Or they'll add some really bad graphics or icons or something like that. And usually when we're in that situation, what, we're, what we don't realize what we're looking for is just some sort of texture, something to 
you know, make it a little less stark white space. For me, one of the things that I like to do is I like to add watermarks. Um, and if we go back to our slide template here, we can see how they actually kind of use this like circular shape. This one's really apparent and obvious, but it's almost like a watermark, right? And so part of me is wondering, could I use that uh, to create or a shape like this to create that kind of watermark style, right? So let's give that a try. I'm gonna jump back to storyline here. I'm gonna zoom out here so I can really see my whole slide. And again, these are just my colors here. I'm not gonna keep those there. I'm just using those so I can sample from it. Uh, and I'm gonna insert a shape and let's do, here we go, we have our donut shape. I'm gonna go ahead and select that and I'm gonna draw a big thick donut, thick with two C's. That's my favorite joke lately. And I'm gonna put it off the screen and that's really too thick, right? So I'm gonna maybe make it like that or something, right? Obviously, I don't want it to look like that, but I got the shape on there, right? So go back to this, it's kind of similar to that. It's a different corner, but that's okay. Uh, maybe make it a little bit thinner. Maybe something like that, right? Now as for the color, you know, I'm using a lot of purple over here. Maybe I wanna use this pink color here. because so we have the, um, that little bit of pink here in the logo. Maybe I want my watermark to be pink as well. So I'm gonna go to my format tab, shape fill. Let's sample our pink color here. Make it pink. We don't need the outline. Turn off the outline. Now, this is still, it's, you know, it's too in your face, right? So, you know, the watermark effect is, you want the learner to be able to see it, but you don't want it to be distracting. So this is where I'm gonna bring the transparency down a ton. So I'll right click, I'm gonna do format shape, and uh, under the fill, we have transparency. And this is where I'm going to adjust the transparency. I'm gonna make it really transparent, like 95%. I'm gonna make it barely visible. 95% I think is good, right? And click close. And you can kind of see we have a little hint of it there. It's not overly apparent, but hey, we have some texture. It doesn't feel like a big boring white space as much as it did before, right? I kind of like it. Let's see how it looks once we start adding our text, which is the next thing I wanna do here. So we have the general layout. Now let's start adding uh, where we would want our slide title to be, right? So I'm gonna add some text here, add a text box, and I'm just gonna make up a course title. I usually don't just like to say, here's a slide title. I usually like to stylize it with, you know, a sample course title. Um, let's say, getting started with investing, right? Um, once I make it a template, I'll change it to be a placeholder that says, you know, insert slide title here or something, right? Now let's figure out how do we stylize our text. Let's go back to our style guide. This is where we're going to use our style guide as a tool. And we're going to find our guidance on our fonts. And if we zoom in here, we can see we have our title font here. It's uh, a heading font and it is catamaran black. Okay, cool. Let's make it catamaran black. Uh, now, as I do this, I should say, you know, working with a style guide, I feel like for me, makes the design process so much easier than if you were creating it from scratch, right? I don't have to worry about creating my own or picking my own fonts or picking my own colors. I get to use this uh, as a guide. Uh, it kind of makes the design process a little, process a little easier because right now I'm really just focusing on layout. I don't have to worry about figuring out do these colors work well together? Do these fonts work well together? I just get to play around and have fun with the layout, okay? So there's the title. I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger there. Maybe, you know, similar size to what we have for the logo over there. Maybe I'll put it right here, centered with the logo. Now this color doesn't work well. We can see here we have some guidance on the color. I'm gonna choose this dark color here. Usually the light and dark color on a given color scheme is usually for text, right? The dark color is how the text would look on a white background. The light color is how the text might look on a dark background, right? Uh, so I'm just gonna use that to sample and change my, uh, the color of my text. So I'll do my eyedropper here, one of my favorite tools. There we go. Uh, it's a small change right? But it, it has this kind of like really dark gray, almost purple color, right? Now, before we continue, one of the things that I typically like to do, and you see this frequently, whenever you have something that's like a heading, like what can you, what can Envelo do for you, right? You typically see some sort of subheading or subtitle, right? If we go back to the homepage, here's our heading, here's our subtitle, here's our call to action button. Here's our heading, here's our subtitle, here's something else, right? Here's a heading, most of this is a heading, 
subtitle, call to action button. I usually like to do something similar with my slide titles. I usually like to have some sort of subheading. It might be something, you know, getting started with investing, how to blah, 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 kind of like a high level learning objective for the learner. Or in this case, maybe let's pretend I was creating a series of courses on investing a 101, right? Uh, maybe I'll create a, it's not a subheading, I guess it'd be like a a pre-heading? I don't know what you'd call this, but like a subheading sitting on top of the pre-heading that kind of harkens back to whatever the series of this course is. Again, I might keep this, I might not. I'm just playing around. So I'm going to insert another text box here. And maybe our little heading, subheading, again, trying to create some visual contrast here might be, you know, investing 101. And maybe for this, let's figure out what our font should be for this. We're going to make it this subtitle here. That's going to be our interfont. And it looks like it's uh, it's a little bit bold, right? So I'm going to make it inter. Let's find that there. Where is inter? There we go. Maybe we'll do inter semi-bold. I didn't provide guidance on that. That's okay. And for the color, I don't want it to be the exact same color as this because, again, I'm going for contrast here. So maybe I'll change it to that pink color. Again, those pops of pink with the purple. I kind of like that, right? And maybe that's going to go up here with our title. See how it's, you know, getting that, it's coming together, you know? Okay. Last thing I want to add to this before we start creating variations on our title or our title screen is a button, right? Uh, I may or may not use this button, but you know, if I want to have a getting started button or a begin button, if I'm going to be creating on-screen navigation, I want to establish a look and feel for my buttons as well. So if we go back to their website, this is where we can start looking for inspiration. We have some purple buttons, which I like, and we also have some pink buttons. And you can see they're kind of these rounded rectangles. So let's go ahead and create a button and add that to the screen. I'm just going to move this guy up here uh, and we'll insert a button. We'll do the rounded rectangle dude here and maybe, you know, we'll put him like that and we'll, you know, this will be begin. And for the font, maybe I'll make it the same as this, the enter semi bold for my buttons. That's good. I don't want it to be blue. Whenever you're working in Storyline, please, 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 for the love of all things good and well, don't just leave shapes and buttons the default colors. It, it means you didn't really try. <laughs> try. Add some color. Don't just go with the default blue. It's, you know, um, do something with your buttons is what I want to say. So I'm going to change the format color. I'm going to make it that pink color, right? Let's do no outline. I don't know. Do I like that? It's fine for now. We can change it later. Um, and the positioning of the button, there's a couple different things we could do. We can put it down here in the middle. I kind of like the idea of it being down here because it's kind of, you know, hugged by the um, our little donut shape. Maybe it can go uh, up here, but or maybe even goes down there. I don't know. I kind of like it down here. That's what I'm going to do with it. Again, moving things around until I feel like it looks good. All right, I'm going to move this off the screen because we're going to keep using that. And maybe that's a slide title, right? Now, this is where in the design process, again, we're just riffing here, we're iterating, we're playing around with the design. Once I create one that I feel like, yeah, I think that's good. This is where we start then creating variations of it, right? What if we wanted something that had a you know, a big block of purple, or what if we wanted something with a different layout, right? This is where we can create different variations of our uh, course title. So I'm going to duplicate this and, or yeah, duplicate it. And we're going to start playing around with different ones. Maybe what we want to do is instead of this being a logo here, maybe we want an image here, right? So let's do something like that. I'm going to move our logo out of the way and let's put an image in this space. Um, and one of the places I like to get images is from pexels.com, P-E-X-E-L-S. Uh, I talked about that in the visual design workshop I linked to earlier. Pexels is great because they're images that you can use for free. You don't have to give attribution. You can use them however you want. You don't have to pay for them. So, um, I don't know, let's do, uh, you know, computer work or smiling at a camera or something like that. Something that looks like somebody is doing some serious real estate investing. When you're selecting colors, one thing I'll mention too, 
you know, if you look at this photo here, this is a great photo, but there's a lot of color in this photo, meaning there's this bright blue background, there's this really yellowy shirt, which is also accented by this big brown, almost yellowish desk, and this one, I wouldn't want to use that image because it's going to con uh, conflict with... Um, my slide template, right? So you want something that complements it. I love this photo here because it, you know, her bright colors, her lipstick, her clothes, like your eyes go straight to her, but none of these colors really align with the brand, so I may not use that one, right? Uh, so I want to find something where there's maybe some neutral colors or something that does uh, complement my colors well. And while I'm talking about images, one of the important things too is you want to pick images that look like real people doing real things in real work environments. You don't want cheesy stock photography, right? Um, and you want to have diversity in your photos as well, too. That's important uh, always. Not just racial diversity, but diversity showing um, different people. Maybe somebody in a wheelchair or, you know, represents real people in real life. So I'm just scrolling through here. Uh, and you can see there's a different... Uh, I like that one. I like how it's kind of cropped there. I might use something like that. <laughs> Again, here's a great example. Too bold of colors in that. It'll visually conflict with my slide. I like that one, but same thing with the colors. That one's a nice, clean photo. Open up that one. She's not having a good day there on her computer. Mm -hmm. I kind of like this one. I'm just going to open up a bunch of these. I can spend a lot of time looking at photos. One thing I like is the, the stark background on this one. There's something I could do interesting with that. So we'll play with that as well. Get a little purple there. Okay. So what do we have here? We have this dude using a computer, we have her, and then we have her, right? Let's do this one. I kind of like this one, and then I might use this woman typing on the laptop, and we can use that one as well. I'm going to copy this photo, come back to storyline, let's paste that in there. Again, we're just playing around, creating variations on our title slide. And I'm going to put that over here, and I'm going to crop it to fit into that area, right? So I'm going to crop my photo. And if I can do that, to use two hands there to crop on my trackpad. And oops, go over here. Let's crop over here. Mm, where's the edge of my slide? I cannot see the edge of my slide. Oh, yeah, I cropped it way too much, obviously. <laughs> okay, let's crop again. There's the edge of the slide. I should snap to it. There we go. Let's adjust her so she's more centered on the photo. Maybe we'll. You love working with a trackpad versus a mouse. There we go. Something like that, right? And uh, let's zoom out here so we can kind of see it all. Yeah, so that's how you might incorporate a photo. Let's do another variation of it. Oh, let's figure out what to do with our logo too. This is a great example where maybe the logo goes up here. And then maybe my begin button, just to create some visual balance. Maybe that gets centered here on the screen, right? Simple. Let's create another variation. Let's do this time, let's get rid of this photo and let's do this one here. I'll show you something I would do with this one. Let's copy this and let's paste her in there on the screen. It's gonna take its time. Okay, good. What I like about this photo is that we kind of have nothing in the background, which means we can add stuff on top of it easily. Now, the first thing I'm gonna do is actually this is a great opportunity where maybe if we wanted to swap the layout right maybe we want to have her on the right hand side versus all on the left hand side right so let's move some things around here oops let's move that up here let's put her over here and let's move this over there and uh, i need to edit my drop shadow of course so let's do that real quickly let's send her to the back too send to the back and then uh, oh, we need to change that to the back too because we have that background shape. Send it to the back. There she is. Okay, cool. Uh, let's fix the drop shadow. Let's do format shape. And in this case, we need to adjust the direction of it. Um, but I think this is going to get rid of that setting, right? 
Uh, can we see the drop shadow pop peeking through? Yeah, okay, we can still see it peeking through. That's not as much as I want. So maybe we want it going off that way, but again, it gets rid of the drop shadow. How annoying is that? So let's recreate the drop shadow. Select my purple, and you know, actually, just for the sake of variation, let's see what it looks like with a green or um, pink drop shadow. Uh, let's make it sized larger and make it way more blurry and make it way more transparent. Something like that, right? It's a lot of pink happening there, but you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna balance that pink by making our circle the purple, right? Mm -hmm. Everything's about balance with visual design and contrast. Obviously that's way too in our face. So let's bring that back up to like 95%. There we go, I like that, that's cool. Obviously our text is in the way, so let's move that over here. And maybe what we'll do, maybe we'll put this guy up here or something like that. I like that. And maybe what we'll do is we'll put the begin button, you know, down here with our text. Move this in a little bit more. Maybe we'll even make it bigger. Okay, and let's edit her a bit. I'm gonna move her in a little bit because we wanna see the computer and let's crop that. And this logo, maybe this is an opportunity where we can put, because it's that stark background on her, right? We can put that logo up in there, something like that. And then maybe this begin button, we have a lot of pink I feel like, so let's balance that by making our button purple. Okay, we've created a totally new look and feel uh, for our course. Now, I'm gonna create one more variation of this and I wanna try something with some color blocking because this is, again, one of the things a lot of people get themselves um, in this rut about is overuse of color and it can be really instinctual to like make everything one big color or use too much color and there's sometimes where that's good and sometimes where that's bad. We're gonna try and see how it looks. Maybe we'll make this whole thing purple uh, or pink. So I'm gonna create one more variation. Let's duplicate this. And maybe what I wanna do is I wanna make this uh, purple. So we'll do shape fill of purple. Obviously we need to adjust uh, our text and our buttons. Let's adjust the text first. Let's change that to, go to my home tab, change my text color, eyedropper, we'll make it that white color there. And then let's do the same thing with the shape here. It's purple and purple, that's why we can't see it. So maybe we'll do the white color and it's 95% transparent and our begin button. I don't know, let's see what it looks like when we make it pink. It might be too much color on color. But it's actually, I kind of like what we're doing here. Um, maybe they'll go down here, right? And then this is also an opportunity where I might start doing some things like, I don't know, let's move this down here, create some space between the title and that uh, subtitle. And maybe what we'll do is we'll insert a shape, something really simple, like the little divider line. I love divider lines. I don't know why I love divider lines, but they're nice because they are. <laughs> That's not a reason to use them, but you know, sometimes we just do things because we like them. Okay, right? I've created a total different look and feel, used a big block of color, added some uh, texture to it, and now before you know it, we have four different variations of our title slide, right? Good, all right. Now this is where I would start now creating some different content slides. Um, but uh, before we do that, what I wanna do is help myself save some time by adopting some of these things to um, my template. And what I mean by that is setting up my font styles along with um, uh, um, the, the different headings for my font styles, right? There's a lot of different features in Storyline that can save you time when you're working with um, text and font. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to go to my design tab and you'll notice under the design tab, we have a couple different options for colors and fonts. Now I'll be completely honest and transparent with you all. I never create my own color schemes in here. Why? Because 
Uh, this tool is not at all easy to use. There's all sorts of things that don't make any sense, and I just rarely ever play with it. But I believe the folks at Articulate are making this a little bit easier here in the near future, so uh, I'm not even bother with this. I don't bother with that. But one thing I do uh, oftentimes edit are my font schemes. I'll come in here and create a new font scheme, because this is easy, so I'll create a new font scheme. And uh, this is easy because I'm only selecting two fonts, my heading font and my body font, right? We already know what those are. What's my heading font? It is Cadmoran Black, so I'll find that in here. Cadmoran Black, and my body font is Interlight, I think it is. Font names are so bizarre, aren't they? They're like almost like um, prescription drug commercial names. Weird groupings of syllables and letters and stuff. Okay. Uh, in Velo fonts. There we go. There's my font, font theme. Why did, now, did that do anything? Not right away, but I'll tell you what, how that saves time. Now, anytime I go and insert some text, here is a heading. If I select that text and I go to my font dropdown, you can see Catamaran and Interlight are now selected as my theme fonts for the heading and so forth and so on. Now, as we create our body, um, or our content slides, I'll also show you how we'll apply text styles, which can also help us save time uh, throughout our course. All right, so we have some title screens, title slides, fantastic. Let's go back to story view and let's start creating some content slide layout. So I'm gonna duplicate, actually let's rename this, title slides, and I'm gonna duplicate this whole thing and we'll call this content slides. And I'm gonna delete a whole bunch of these because I'm going to be creating a whole bunch of new layouts. And we're going to start with uh, creating variations of our title screen. Uh, remember, the title screen establishes the look and feel that you're going to see usually throughout the whole course. So we want to incorporate these different elements in the design of our content slides. Um, and content slides, when you create the theme for your content slide, it's actually way simpler than you might assume. You don't need to have a lot of elements on your template because Ultimately, you want to have a lot of white space for your course content, especially if you're creating a template that's going to be reused and repurposed in many different ways. It's okay to just have a big empty white space, right? Uh, so that's what we're going to create. Let's create a couple different variations of our content slides. First, let's get rid of what we don't need. Do I need this logo? No, because we're not going to put the logo on every single slide. Um, I don't need the button right now, so maybe I'll get rid of that. What I really need is just my title and then eventually a text box for my body content. So I'll get rid of that. We'll leave our watermark here. I like that. Maybe what I want to do is I want to make sure I have some space for my slide title. Uh, and I kind of like how I used these two shapes with the, um, if I can get it here, with our little glow here, our drop shadow to create some visual um, separation. So maybe what I'll do is I'll play on that where maybe the title will be up here. Oops, I did not mean to move it like that. Let's bring that down even more. Uh, that's a little too much space. Let's bring it up. Something like that, right? Here is a really cool slide title. Okay, cool. All right, let's put that up here. See how that looks, feels. Does that look and feel right? Yeah, I don't hate it. Uh, the drop shadow is so little, uh, strong for me on this since there's such a small area so this might be a place or a time when i'll come in here and we'll make it even more transparent just to make it even that much more subtle on here uh, maybe we'll make the size a little bit smaller yeah something like that right it didn't seem like a lot changed but it made it a bit more subtle and uh that might just be my slide title layout or my content slide layout. Very simple, right? Because I don't know what I'm going to put on here, text or images or icons or animations, right? Uh, let's get rid of that. On Actually, I'm going to keep this on the screen because I'm going to uh, keep sampling colors there. Oops, I didn't mean to select that. Let's go back here to the center of the screen. Okay, so that's one, very, that's one version of it. Let's keep creating some variations. Let's duplicate this. Maybe the next one will have some text on it and a space for an image, right? So let's insert a text box here and add some text. This might be helpful if I'm creating, you know, um, a text-based course, of course. So um, I need some placeholder text. In Storyline, one of the cool things you can do is you can actually generate placeholder text. It requires um, some code. 
All you have to type in is the equal sign, lorem, L-O-R-E-M, open parenthesis sign, and then insert a number. Whatever that number is, is how many paragraphs of placeholder text is going to generate. So I'll do five and do enter, right? It's like a cheat code. Um, and there we go. We have some placeholder text. And because we already established our uh, body content or body text as interlight, it's gone ahead and done that. But maybe I want to establish what a subheading might look like, right? So I'm going to delete some of that extra text here. And maybe I want my subheading to be not interlight, but maybe enter some semi bold. Oops, not the whole thing. Oh, just the highlighted piece. Enter semi bold. Maybe it'll be a little bit larger, right? Uh, and maybe that's what a subheading might look like. And then maybe on this side of the screen, we can get rid of that. Maybe over here, this is where I'm going to be adding graphics or illustrations or photos to uh, my slides, right? So let's go back to the website here. And we can see there's all these interesting illustrations. Maybe these are illustrations that I will use in my course. Maybe they are, maybe they aren't. Either way, I'm going to add them in there just to provide some visual guidance. So maybe what I'll do is I'll insert a picture from file. And if we go to our assets and our illustrations, I have some of these here. And I don't know, she looks like she's doing some real estate investing. She's happy about it. That's great. I'll make her a little bit larger there. And, you know, maybe that's a slide layout, right? I will say these two feel, I feel like there's something missing from them. Like we have this little circle here, which is some nice texture, um, but I feel like something else is missing. So one of the things I oftentimes like to do is I like to include a pop of a more bold color, but I don't want it to take up a lot of space and I don't want it to be overly distracting. And so one of the things that I oftentimes do is I will add, I don't know, I'll call it an edge to it. I don't, I'll show you what I mean. I'll insert a shape from file or shape uh, from my insert tab and do a rectangle. And I'm just gonna draw a big, skinny small rectangle here it's going to go from edge to edge and i'm going to move it to be right on the bottom here and i'll do a format shape fill and i'll do purple and no outline like that and there we go it's just a simple little accent right it creates again some more visual contrast that helps you know frame in the slide if you will a little bit um and maybe i'll put that on this one here as well copy and paste that Maybe what I'll do, I'll duplicate this. Maybe we'll create a different layout. If we can get it to duplicate, duplicate. Is it not duplicating my slides? Let's try it over here. Duplicate, there we go. Uh, this is probably a good time we should hit save. <laughs> I'm gonna call this my Envelo template um, example. Okay, save that. Um, maybe one of the things I'll do with this shape is maybe instead of on the bottom, you could do something like this where it kind of goes across the side. You know, you can create all sorts of different variations. And then maybe on this variation, we have text on the right, image on the left. Okay, there's a variation, right? Um, okay, let's duplicate this slide. Maybe one of the things I want to create are uh, a slide that might be used as a transition slide. Maybe we're moving from one topic to another topic, right? And I want to create a transition. So let's get rid of all of this stuff here. I'm going to delete that. Um, maybe what I want to do as a transition slide is maybe let's get rid of this thing there and let's bring this to the front. You'll see why in a moment. Let's bring our text to the front. And what we'll do is we'll make this fill up the whole screen area, right? And let's make this white because the pink on purple doesn't look all that great for the drop shadow. I like that. And then maybe here is our title for our new, our, you know, section chapter heading, right? Something like that. Um, you know, transition slide title. And then maybe what I want to do is grab this and maybe this is going to be, um, you know, up here again to reference back to the course title, right? And we'll bring this down here. There we go. A transition slide. 
right? Something like that, You're creating different variations. Maybe we wanna create a variation of our slide that includes an image. So let's take this, something that's not a graphic. Oh, actually, you know what, let's do this. Let's create a variation of the slide that's like uh, a menu for our course, right? So let's do this one, I can get rid of this. No, actually, I'll keep that because I wanna use the color. So let's duplicate this. Duplicate button's working this time, that's great. Okay, and we'll call this our main menu. I don't know what I typed there. And let's center this, arrange, align, center. And you know, usually what I do with my main menus, I'm gonna give this a little bit more space. One of the things I like to do on a menu slide is I like to have the course title on it. So this is another opportunity where maybe we use this pink subheading Good, okay. Now, what do we wanna make our main menu look like, right? Well, I don't think I need the colors there anymore, actually, I'm gonna delete that. So let's go look at, you know, if we look at the style guide here, one of the things that I noticed when we were going through it that I really liked was this look. See how there's like these, they're like cards almost. Um, and so I wanna create something like this where we have these cards, there's a subtle drop shadow on them uh, that can act as, you know, our menu. So uh, I'm gonna put that here across the screen. So I'm gonna insert a shape and we're gonna do a rounded rectangle here. And uh, maybe we'll just do three, right? I might create, if this were a real template, I might create multiple variations in the menu, one for two items, three items, four items, five, five items, right? So it's scalable. Whenever I do a rounded rectangle too, I never leave the default radius for the rounded corners. I always like really, really subtle rounded corners. It just looks cleaner. So I'll usually bring them up, make them really, really tight like that. And I'm just gonna do, um, let's do a white fill. It's not gonna look like you can see anything because it's white on white, but here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna do uh, no outline, and then we're gonna give it that subtle um, shadow. Let's do a drop shadow. And, oops, I always like to create a custom drop shadow. The default ones are just a little too much. Um, so I'm gonna bring that blur up and blur it out. Let's drag it here, make it blurry and then bring the transparency in. Again, subtlety is key. Make it, mm, no, 95 is too much. Let's do 90% transparent. Yeah, so I can still kind of see it there, right? Um, Okay, cool. Um, let's create two more of these real quickly before I move on, because I have some thoughts. And put that over here. And we're gonna align and distribute those real quickly. Distribute those, something like that. That looks good. Uh, it still feels like a little bit too much white on white. So maybe this is where I'm gonna start using one of these colors. I kind of like these more muted versions of the color. So this is where I'm gonna, again, take another screen clipping, but that's very similar to this right up here. Maybe what I'll do is I'm going to, uh, let's grab the color palette. Where did I put the color palette? Let's grab that here, copy that, paste it in here. Maybe for this, what I'll do is I'll make this shape, this off color, and then maybe this background will just be white. So we're kind of doing the opposite there. Um, but that drop shadow doesn't really work on that anymore, right? You almost don't see the distinction there. Let's undo that. Yeah, I like that look and feel better. Again, this is part of the process. You try something, you see how you like it, keep it or undo it, okay? So those are the cards. Now let's add some details to it, right? We need a title uh, for our menu items. So we'll just do this. And I'm gonna call this, oops, I'm gonna bring it to the front. Bring to the front. We'll call this um, uh, menu item number one. Make it smaller. So maybe that's the title for what's on that menu item. And usually what I do is I'll create one and then I'll uh, duplicate it for the other. So I'm gonna bring this down here to the middle. I know we're gonna need a button here. So let's grab a button from our one of our title slide layouts here. Copy that and paste that in here. 
Maybe put that right there. And this is gonna say learn more. And uh, maybe on this menu card thing, I wanna have like an icon. So let's see what we have from our website here. If we go back to the website, I believe it was on one of these sub pages. There's these icons, but there's also these icons. I like these ones, these are clean. I have some of these in my assets folder, so I'm just gonna insert picture from file. And uh, we have some icons here. You know, again, I might replace these once I know what the menu items would be in a real course, but again, I'm just trying to establish a general look and feel of how this might look, right? I kind of like that. Okay, cool, that works for me. Copy and paste that. Move these over here for other menu items. Bring that over here. Is that aligned? I think so. No, it isn't. is it? I have no idea, we'll fix that here. Menu item two and menu item three. Let's replace this icon. Great tip and storyline. You can replace an image. You don't have to delete it and reinsert it. So right click, replace picture from file, and I'm gonna choose a different icon. We'll do the bar graph, that's cool. And then we'll replace this one. Replace picture from file, and we will do a checklist. That's cool. Let's align these. I don't know if they were aligned. I feel like they were, but who knows? Uh -huh. Oh, they were not. Shame on me. Align, middle, so they're all aligned. And align our buttons. All right, cool. So there's a menu. Maybe the last thing I need to add is like, if there's, you know, when the learner goes through a menu, you wanna give them a check mark to let them know when they're done. So let's mock that up. I'm gonna insert, uh, let me just do that with icons actually. Let's do uh, check. See what comes up for that. Um, oh, I like this one. Yeah, but I like that one too. Let's do this one. I think that better goes with it, right? So maybe once they've completed a section, make that a little bit smaller, they will get, oh, I do not want to move that. I don't know what's going on on my computer. There we go. That's what I get for using keyboard shortcuts. I am horrible at keyboard shortcuts. Okay, let's see if we can grab that. Do you ever have this problem where you can't click on the thing? There we go, because it's too small. That's always fun. So maybe that check mark goes up here when they complete something, and the check mark is, you know, our purple color. Let's sample that from down here. Something like that, right? I don't know. I don't like it how it's hovering halfway over. So maybe it'll go, if we can click on it, see this is the beauty of really tiny things on the slide. There we go. <laughs> Move it up here. See, even when you've been using Storyline for 10 years, we all have the same, we run into the same issues with Storyline. So don't feel like it's just you, because it's not. Trust me. I forget to rename things in my timeline all the time. I forget to hit save, let's hit save. You know, it's part of being an e-learning developer. Okay. So that's a main menu slide. Uh, let's do one more interaction slide. Maybe I wanna create a layout for, I don't know, like a scenario, right? A customer service scenario. And one of the things I wanna do, let's go ahead and duplicate uh, this layout for it. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna duplicate this one and I'll just put it down here. It doesn't matter how I organize it. Um, okay. A scenario slide. Maybe I know I'm gonna be creating courses where there's gonna be you know, these branching scenarios where it's gonna simulate like a customer interaction. Again, I'm creating some guidance. This is what I want you to remember about these templates. Nothing I'm creating is set in stone. It's just providing visual guidance. So I'm adding different assets and elements, laying them out. But when you get into building a real course, you can change these things, move these things around. So this is just providing some guidance as a template. You don't have to use it verbatim as it's been designed, right? You can move things around. So uh, let's start here. Let's add some text here, you know, um, drag and drop the correct response to this interaction. Uh, to the drop target 
for this interaction. Now, obviously, that doesn't make sense because we don't have an interaction. So let's create an interaction, right? Maybe what I want to do is kind of, again, a play on the split screen thing with our drop shadow. Maybe what I'll do is I'm going to do it like this. Just stick with me here. Okay. So whenever we do like a scenario slide like this or a branching scenario, you need to have instructions for what the learner needs to do. We've done that. We need to show the situation. In this case, it's going to be a back and forth conversation. And then we need some options for the learner to choose from, right? So let's create like a back and forth conversation between two people. What I'm going to do, let's go grab some photos of people. Let's go back here. Mm, did we use this guy? No, I want to use somebody looking at the camera. Whenever I want somebody like smiling, looking at the camera, I search smile at camera. And we get, uh, no, not smile at camera. That's what I meant. Headshot is always what I look for. All right, I like her. Let's go ahead and open her in a new tab. That image is a little blurry. I like him. This one, mm, um, ooh, some of these are serious. I like this one, okay. I think it's actually the same guy, just a different photo. Let's copy her in, copy image, paste her into storyline. Let's get our, uh, actually let's edit her and then I'll do the other guy. So what I wanna do is I wanna create what I liked on their website. If I go back to the client's website, Go to their home tab. I like this. You see how they have the, you know, the person cropped that looks almost like a profile image, right? I want to create that effect in Storyline. So I'm going to go back to Storyline here. Now, what I can do, if I were to go to my Format tab and Picture Shape and crop this to like a circle, it's going to crop it to an oval. Why is it cropping it to an oval? Well, because it's a rectangular image, so it crops it to an oval within that. That doesn't work for me. I want it to be a perfect circle around her face. So how do we do that? This is a common question I get from folks. I'll show you what I do. It's kind of a nifty trick. First thing I'm going to do is insert a shape. I'm going to insert a perfect square. So I'm going to hold shift, draw a square like this, okay? Right over where I want it to crop around her face, okay? Let's move that over a little bit. And I'm just using the shape as a guide uh, for me to crop my image. So I'm going to crop my image. I'll go to my format tab, go to the, uh, crop it, and I'm going to crop it perfectly to this shape. So it's gonna snap there, and it's gonna snap up there. Okay, perfect, I've cropped it. Now let's move our shape out of the way, and here's our person. Now it's not a circle, right? But now if we go to Format, Cropped Picture, because it's a perfect square, it'll now crop as a perfect circle, right? Ta-da, it's amazing. Uh, it was like several years of me playing around with Storyline before I figured that out, okay? So let's uh, make her a little bit smaller because we're gonna create this back and forth conversation put her up there. Let's get our dude on the screen here. Here's our guy, where's he at? There he is, okay. Copy image, paste that there. It's gonna take a moment. Okay, I, was gonna I thought it was gonna take a minute there. Um, bring this to the front, because we're gonna use, again, this square as a guide. It's a little small, so uh, here, let's do this. Move him over here. I think what we'll do, we can just make the square a little bit larger. Because again, it's just a guide. There we go. Now let's crop to our square. Crop our image. Crop it over here. Okay, cool. We don't need that square anymore. Hey, now we can do format, picture shape, circle. Now it's a circle. All right, cool. Now, here's another cool little nifty trick in Storyline. I have two images that are uh, two different sizes, but I want them to be the same size. What could I do about it? Well, first thing I could do is I could select this and look at the dimensions. I can do, oh, it's 84 by 84. Go here, type in 84 by 84. That's one way you can do it. Or if you hold the shift key and select both of them at the same time, go to your home tab in Storyline, do arrange, do size, and then you can do uh, make the same width, same height, make the same size, grow to largest, shrink to smallest. So in this case, I'm going to shrink to smallest, and it will make our dude shrink down to the same size as this character here. Perfect. Okay. So I'll put him over here, and we'll do another one over here, and... Uh, yeah, we'll actually just do it like that. We'll do um, a back and forth that looks something like this, okay? Now, 
Uh, what do I want to do here? I want to create like a back and forth conversation. It almost looks like a text message, right? So I'm going to insert some like speech bubbles. So I'll go to insert and I'll do a caption. We'll do a speech bubble like this. And we'll draw that here on the screen. And I'm just going to point our little pointy thing. I don't even know what that's called. It's the pointy thing. Format, shape, fill, maybe make that purple. Turn off the outline, no outline. And here is something this character is saying to our customer. Cool. And then we'll duplicate this. Maybe we'll put that down here next to him. Change the pointy thing over to his side. Okay. Uh, here is the customer's response to the thing you said before. Okay, that's cool. And then down here, this is where we want the learner to, you know, maybe they're going to drag and drop their response or select response. Who knows, right? Um, we'll put that here and we'll say something like uh, drag the correct response to the conversation here. All right. And I want to make it look like something the learner needs to drag to. So I'm going to change the fill color to white. We'll change the outline to our purple color. Maybe we will make it a dotted outline like that. Uh, maybe we'll increase the weight a little bit. Again, I'm just playing around with this. I like that. Obviously, we can't read that text. So we'll make that purple as well just to be consistent. Uh, actually, we'll make it this color over here like that. All right, there we go. Of course, I could spend some time aligning and distributing these, but again, I'm just playing around here, mocking this up. And then, of course, I need to have the options here, right? So let's take this one over here. Yeah. Here is the first, no, here is the incorrect response. That's, I cannot type today. Incorrect response. Do another one. There we go. Here is the correct response. Okay. And there's another incorrect response. I cannot spell. That's fine. Let's distribute these. Okay. I'm going to hit save. So maybe there's a mock-up for uh, an interaction, right? I'm not liking the way those are positioned, so I'm going to move these down a little bit so it feels a little bit more centered in that side of the screen. Maybe there's a scenario slide interaction. All right. So I've spent a lot of time, you know, just playing around, creating different layouts, creating different designs, incorporating different graphics. We've created several different title slides, but you know, you see how it's come together with sort of a cohesive look and feel. Now, if I were to preview this right now, let's just preview this scene. One of the things that you'll notice right off the bat is uh, once it previews, I will tell you in a moment, it's just gonna take a sweet time to preview. All right. Once it previews, one of the things you'll notice is that, you know, the slide looks good, if I do say so myself. Uh, but the player, mm -mm, the player is just all sort of all sorts of disjointed. One of the things that I feel like people should be doing earlier rather than later is take some time to customize your player to align with the branding. Because the player from a visual design standpoint is equally as important as your slides. It's all part of one big experience, right? And so uh, I'm going to see how this looks once I customize the player. And you're going to see how much more cohesive it's going to feel once we establish a good look and feel for the player. So let's do that. I'm going to close out of this and we'll go into our player settings. And, you know, there's usually two things I'm going to do with my player. I'm going to change the color of it and change the accent color and then also um, change the player fonts, right? So let's do the colors first. Let's do colors and effects. Personally, I like the light colored player, unless I'm doing something that, you know, caters to the dark colored player. I like the light colored player. I'm going to do an accent color of our purple. So select that there. That's good. And it didn't change anything yet. You'll see that here in a moment. And then for the player fonts, I think I'm going to go ahead and do our heading font, but a less bold version of it. Let's do our, um, what was it called again? Oh, Cabaran, maybe extra bold. You can see that there. Um, everything else is fine for right now. And let's go turn on some of the player features. 
Oh, I did not adjust that color. What did it do? Who knows? Okay. Oh, there we go. Being a little glitchy today, isn't it? And we can kind of see that use of that accent color here in the menu, all of that good stuff. I think that's good. Let's go ahead and click OK. And now let's preview it. Let's preview this scene and see what it all looks like with our stylized player. There we go. It just looks so much more consistent, right? We have our accent color matches the purple, our begin button. Again, I may not use that. I may use the um, built-in uh, player features, but uh, you know, we can see how this might look with these different layouts, with this clean look and feel. Let's go ahead and look at um, some of our content slides, how that might look in our player. Again, clean look and feel, right? All right, so I'm gonna stop there for a moment. Let's hit save. Now at this point in the process, if I were really creating this template for this client, this might be where I would stop, publish it to Articulate Review, and send it to them to review and go, hey, this is kind of the direction I'm headed in. How do you feel about it? There's no real content in here. I'm just playing around with the look and feel just to establish, hey, are they good with it? I have not yet committed anything to a master slide. I haven't created any um, master slide templates or anything like that. And I'm not going to do that until after uh, we've you know, more solidified uh, the different elements um, that I want to include in my template. Once you're ready to start moving forward with the development, that's when you want to, you'd want to start creating your master slides. And when it comes to creating master slides in Storyline, I'm not always the best when it comes to using them. A lot of times I'll just do the, what I've been doing uh, here is creating all of my elements on my slides and then I'll lock them down on my timeline. Um, and part of the reason I do that is just so I can have complete control over everything on every single slide. However, master slides can save you a lot of time if you have certain elements that are going to be consistently used throughout your entire course, all right? And typically what I like to do is I like to restrict my master slides to just those elements that I think are going to be present on every single slide, right? And you, of course, you can create different variations of your master slide and different layouts. So let me show you how I'd create a master slide. Let's say this was going to be my slide title, and then I have a couple of different content layouts, right? So what I'm going to do here, let me zoom out here. I want to select all of this. Uh, I'm going to copy it, and we will paste it into the master slide here in a moment. Cut, copy, OK. And let's go to our master slide in Storyline. Go to the View tab, do Slide Master. Now, if you've ever worked with Slide Masters in PowerPoint, they work identically in Storyline. They're exactly the same thing. So let me do a quick explanation of how Slide Masters work, and then I'll show you how to create a couple of different masters for this template. So Slide Masters have a parent-child relationship. So we see our Slide Masters over here. This is the parent Slide Master. And what that means is anything I put on this layout will be applied to all of my Slide Masters. And if I'm being completely honest with you, I rarely put anything on this because there's rarely any particular design element that's gonna exist on every single slide. But let me show you what I mean by that. Let's say hypothetically, I always wanted my logo down here in the bottom left corner. I might insert a picture from file. Let's go grab their logo. There's my Envelo logo. And you can see, I'll just leave it there. You can see how it applied it to all the different variations, right? I can't select it on these variations because it exists here on the parent. Right? And if I change it here, if I make it really tiny and I bring it down here to the corner, you can see how it does that on all of these as well. Okay, I don't need that, so I'm going to delete that here. But we will notice if we look at our different uh, slide titles here, we have a title only layout, we have a title and content layout, and these are different layouts that I can create and customize for the look and feel of my course. So let's go ahead and create our title layout here. You can see the title layout is pretty simple as a slide title, right? Uh, so let's do this. I'm going to paste in all of my elements uh, that I created on my slide title. I'm going to send them to the back. Uh, I don't know where I was going with that. Send to the back. There we go. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to replace this with this. So delete that. Set that to be left justified. Yeah, because I want this to act as my template, right? I want it to work as a template or a slide master, um, even though it's going to be the course title there. You'll see that here in a moment. And if I needed to adjust the color and everything, I could do that. Um, 
Now, let me show you what this looks like uh, when I uh, edit, when I go back to editing slide. I've created the template. Uh, here's the slide title. It's a placeholder. I'm gonna close out of this. And if I were to, let's create a new scene here. If I wanted to apply that layout, I apply layout, and here's my title layout, right? And it applies all of those elements, and now I can say, you know, um, you know, advanced investing, uh, you know, strategies. Is that useful strategies? Who knows, right? There's my uh, title, right? Um, and I could create multiple variations of my um, title layout. If I go to Slide Master, I could duplicate this and create another Slide Master using those themes I just created. Same thing with my uh, course, um, uh, my content slides here, right? So let's go grab the basic content slide layout and I'll zoom out here and select all of these elements, copy them, go back to my Slide Masters and uh, here's my title and content and I'm gonna paste that all in here and send it to the back, right? And let's adjust our slide title to match this one. So, uh, oops. There it is, I'm just gonna delete this one. And we'll make this left justified. And because I already adjusted those font themes, it's gone ahead and applied it there. And then we have our slide text there, right? Uh, close out of our master view. And now if I were to go back to here and add another slide, do a new slide, I could do a basic layout. And now uh, here's my title and content, right? Automatically applies those. Here's my slide title. Here's my placeholder for the text. I could delete it. And now I have all these elements. I don't have to worry about moving these or anything like that because it's been adopted to the slide master. How much you uh, spend time building out your slide masters is totally up to you. You don't have to use slide masters if you don't want to. It can help you. It can help things make more, be more consistent, a little bit more simplified. But if your template is just a bunch of different layouts like this, where you lock all of those items in the timeline so you don't accidentally mess them up, that's totally acceptable too, I promise you. Um, there's no law, no rule that says you can't do that, all right? So let's say this became the template now, right? If, if it were me, the way I would go about using this is I would save this off as a template. And each time I wanted to create a new course, I could open this up and use the slides as I need. The other thing that you can do in Storyline is if you go to File and Save As, you can actually save it as a template file. And what that allows you to do is to re-import it as a template that you can reuse. One other thing that I'll mention too is if you happen to be using Articulate Storyline with a team of people and you're on this Articulate 360 Teams account, you can actually share these different slide layouts through your Articulate 360 account. So if I wanted to, I could publish this slide uh, layout or all of my slide layouts to my Teams account. I'll show you how I do that. If I go to my Slides tab, you can see there's Team Slides. This is only available if you're on a Teams account. And you can come up here and I can share the entire project or share this selected slide and um, put it in my Teams account and add it. And it's been published there. And let's see if it's gonna take me there. No, but we'll go to my 360 account, right? Actually, no, sorry. Let's go back to Storyline. And if I wanted to use it, if I was working on a team, I could come in here and um, I'd have to insert a new slide. My mind went blank there for a moment. Team slides. And here would be the team slides. I can import those into Storyline from the Teams account. But again, you'd have to be on a Teams account to do that. And then you'd also have your templates. If you saved something off as a template file, uh, those would show up here as well. Who knows what the heck this template was? We don't need that, so I'm gonna delete that. All right. So that's how you might go about creating a custom branded template in Articulate Storyline. The thing that I want you to remember is that a template simply provides guidance. It's nothing that's set in stone. It's just something that can be a springboard into the design of your course. And once you've established a template, then you don't have to worry about the fonts and the colors. You just have to worry about designing your content, right? And uh, when you're designing a template based off of a client style guide or their brand standards, again, it's just guidance, but there's a lot of opportunity to get inspiration, not just from the style guide, but also from their website and how they use different colors and different fonts 
and different images. And all of those things can be brought together to create a, a, a clean, simple template. And as you can see through what we went through today, it wasn't all that complicated. It was some simple shapes, some colors, some work playing around the drop shadows. It was mostly just playing around with the layout to get what we wanted to create several different variations of title slides uh, and several different variations of content slides. All right. So I want to thank you again so much for watching. Uh, as I mentioned at the top of the video, if you happen to be watching this on YouTube, make sure to click that like, subscribe, and that bell button to get alerted the next time I publish a video just like this one. And you can check out all of our uh, past how-to workshops on the YouTube channel as well. And of course, make sure to join us inside the eLearning Designers community. It's free and it's a great place to connect and network with others who are also looking to grow their eLearning design skills and careers. All right. My name is Tim Slade. Thanks again for watching and until next time, I'll see you around.